государыне императрицы. Ура! 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 Екатерина II was the only woman emperor in Russian history. Her light blue eyes were filled with ambition. During her reign, she was a wise ruler who expanded the boundaries of her country and laid the foundations for Russia to become a world power. Ekaterina even had the ambition to say that if she lived to be 100 years old, Europe would lay at her feet. However, what made her a strong woman was not the fact that she had a smooth life at all, but the awakening and growth of herself. After a long period of helplessness, one of the most significant influences on her change was a failed marriage. Ekaterina started out as a princess of a declining Prussian aristocracy. She was sent to Russia for a political marriage. In the cold winter of 1742, in a white world of frost, a dilapidated carriage passed through the snow. Inside the carriage sits a young girl who is full of fantasies of love, her eyes deep and sparkling with innocence. Her mother asked Ekaterina, whose name at that time was Friedrich, Do you know where you are going? Friedrich answered Russia, an Asian country with cold weather. Her mother corrected her by saying it was an Asian country that wanted to rule Europe. Then she picked up a Russian book and stumbled through the words. She was determined to marry the Russian crown prince. Meanwhile, the Russian court was not idle. Empress Elizabeth and her ministers were discussing the choice of the crown princess. Unfortunately, they were all against the crown prince marrying a Prussian princess. The long journey brought them discomfort, and the girl's mother complained about the lack of a potty. Friedrich calmed her down and whistled to stop the galloping carriage. The horses are suddenly frightened and run wildly, causing the wheels to hit a tree branch and tip over. In the midst of the icy snow, a handsome man appeared before Friedrich's eyes like an angel with a halo of light. Mama, the sister, the prince. Friedrich fell in love with him at first sight and mistook him for her fiancé. Then, he carried the princess of Prussia step by step over the snow towards the hut. The girl felt the warmth of this man's embrace and thought she was about to marry love. But the man's introduction shattered her dreams. It turned out that Saltikov was not the prince she had fantasized about, but a chamberlain sent by the queen to receive her. This meant that her three-second love affair was over. Friedrich felt heartbroken. Well, teenage love can come and go quickly. After a short rest and adjustment, Friedrich had come to terms with the situation. She began to ask Saltikov how she could win the prince's heart. Why doesn't she need to impress her fiancé? As the girl pondered, the carriage entered the palace. The dominant woman walking towards us is Elizabeth, the Empress of Russia. She was a ruthless and powerful woman, but she was never married and never had any children. So she chose her sister's son, Peter, as the heir to the Russian throne. But Peter was what the Empress called a neurotic idiot. He was always doing stupid things because he was the heir. On this day, when he went to see the Empress, he brought the hounds into her room. Despite the no-dog rule, Ты изволил явиться ко мне с собаками? Король Фридрих в торжественные минуты шествует в сопровождении собак. The only reason he's been promoting the German king on Russian soil is because he admires Frederick the Great. Elizabeth was furious at her nephew's stupidity, but Peter, as if he didn't notice her anger, continued to irritate his aunt. Когда я стану императором, я переменю русскую жизнь. Я запрещу неправильные традиции и установлю правильные. What an idiotic and ignorant thing to say in front of the current empress. To show Peter what she's capable of, Elizabeth took him to a prison on the border. Looking at the bloody prisoners at the cell doors and listening to his aunt's harsh words, Peter became weak in the knees and couldn't keep his temper any longer. He immediately apologized to his aunt and promised to listen to her. Not wanting to let him off the hook, Elizabeth took her to visit the boy in prison. He was Ivan the Sixth, only two weeks old. Not only was he imprisoned by Elizabeth, he was forbidden to speak to anyone or learn to read or write. He was kept like a piece of trash. Looking at the innocent boy, Peter was so frightened that he fainted and fell asleep. On the carriage ride back to the city, Elizabeth held her sleeping nephew in her arms and gave up hope on his cowardice. She decides to choose a marriage partner for him so that he can't have a son and she can train a new heir. Back at the palace, Babe in the woods started playing with the dogs in the garden. Soon after, he was called back to the palace by the guards to look at the portraits and choose his favorite wife. But this step was just a formality. After all, the candidate for his wife had already arrived at the palace to be examined by the doctor. Friedrich was taken behind a frosted screen and allowed to be examined by a doctor, even though she was disgusted by his excessively disrespectful demeanor. In order to escape the poverty of her family and live a prosperous life, she compromised by exposing her body to him. The final result of her physical examination was a clean bill of health. After the doctor finished her report, her gala reception was about to begin. The princess of Prussia walked slowly towards Empress Elizabeth with a stiff smile on her face. She crouched down with her skirt in her hands and bowed down respectfully. Empress Elizabeth Rosen came to them. 
She looked carefully at the wife she had chosen for the crown prince. She extends her right hand affectionately to the girl as a sign of her love and support for Friedrich. Without saying a word, she broke through all the talk and suspicion of Friedrich's status. The wise Friedrich understood the Empress' kindness. After kissing the back of her hand, she sends her greetings in Russian, a language she has practiced all along. Elizabeth is pleasantly surprised by her behavior. Friedrich, who is both smart and sensitive, sees the opportunity to please the Empress with a remark. Elizabeth laughed at the compliment. Instantly, the entire royal ballroom erupted in laughter. No one knew why they were laughing, but they could never go wrong by following the Empress' behavior. Friedrich had successfully won the Empress' favor, and a blind date with Peter was on the agenda. She spent the night preparing the topics of conversation for the date and was looking forward to the perfect date with Peter. The next day, under the warm afternoon sun, Friedrich meets the prince she has been longing for. However, Peter's attitude seems to be the opposite of hers. He is extremely cold and resistant. Only when Friedrich takes the initiative can she get closer to him. As the saying goes, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Friedrich saw him through rose-colored glasses. All his neurotic quirks became symbols of his personality in her eyes. The innocent girl is also willing to compromise for love and play with her fiancé. After the couple's first date, Friedrich danced in the hallway with excitement. Looking at Peter the Great's portrait on the wall, she was also in the mood to imitate his movements. Perhaps fate had chosen a path for her to follow. It was Peter's attitude that sent chills down her spine. Meanwhile, someone was secretly plotting to sabotage their marriage. This was at a time when Prussia was rising fast. Britain and France wanted Russia to go to war with Prussia, but the two countries chose to marry. This directly harmed the interests of Britain and France. The French ambassador was on the spot and said angrily that Friedrich must die or disappear. In any case, he had to break up the marriage. So they quietly found a Russian doctor and paid him 50,000 ikis a year to work for France. Then they handed the doctor a bottle of chronic poison. The doctor happily accepted the arrangement. Ça donne quoi, ça rapide? Bien sûr que non. Il faut en tout trois doses. This means that the murder plan was urgent. The doctor had to poison Friedrich before she got married. So the doctor found her maid of honor in the night and deliberately used love to blind her. He promised her that after she poisoned Friedrich, he'd run away with her and live like a married couple. Then he pulled out the poison given to him by the French ambassador. The lady-in-waiting picked it up without a second thought. A conspiracy to kill the prince's fiancée is underway.